Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ask the Expert. It's a daily series from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. to help small businesses. And that's exactly right now when you're tuning in. So what I want you to do is if you want to engage and please engage, you can ask any questions in the comments or use the hashtag QBATE, QBAT on Twitter. And if you need any more advice, you can join the official Intuit QuickBooks SMB community group on Facebook where accountants and business experts are on hand 24 seven. So please do use that resource. And uh, doing the live sessions, and, and uh, this is kind of a new thing for me at least, we will be running a poll. So please engage with that poll. And at the very end, we will uh, reveal the results and we can have a chat about that. But anyway, welcome. Uh, my name is Thomas and I'm the founder of uh, the Good Advertising Agency, which is our sort of marketing agency specialized in sustainability, inclusiveness, purpose, and all of that stuff. I'm also an author of two books. Um, this was actually my first little book called uh, Good Advertising, so advertising for good, so how uh, companies have to and should play a more pivotal and uh, more meaningful role in people's lives. And uh, my newest book, uh, The Hero Trap, which just came out in June, actually, um, so just uh, during the pandemic, not the best time to publish a book. I'm going to be honest about that. But anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, this book because I do think that there could be some helpful advice for all of you in it. Because I'm certain that uh, during the pandemic, um, there is an, uh, an increasing, obviously, uh, demand on uh, businesses today. And I'm certain that you have heard about, you know, sustainability, environment, climate change, purpose, and all that stuff. And one of the things that I have seen, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you have observed some, some as well, is that it does seem like customers are becoming much more demanding are asking different uh, kinds of questions that not just about price or quality but might be questions like you know uh, where's this jersey been made you know where's this food coming from is this vegan all these sorts of questions um, and obviously that puts a lot of pressure on on all of you to kind of answer that and obviously also to push and change uh, your business offerings. Um, but you have a big advantage though by being small because I got to say that most of the companies that I do advise, most of them are big uh, Fortune 500 companies. We do also work with quite a few social and environmental entrepreneurs. But the great thing about being small is that you can move a lot faster than this and you can go much more full into um, uh, for example, coming up with more innovative packaging solutions, etc. But uh, the thing that I noticed about this space, though, over the last decade or so, is that today it's almost like sustainability has become what long-lasting taste was to chewing gum in the '90s. It's just tech advertising lingo because you can basically not go into a supermarket or a cafe today with everybody claiming to be, you know, the Mother Teresa's or the Gandhi's of this world. Everything just spells out sustainability. So the big question is obviously, you know, how do you stick out? How do you create a more compelling story? How do you create an authentic story? And for me, that was really also the question I had to ask myself from the very first book, Good Advertising, that I wrote about a decade ago, to obviously uh, the new book. But I want to ask you one question before I dwell into more of the methodology about uh, the book. And that is, in fact, you know, what company have actually really played a meaningful role in your life? So what company have played a meaningful role in your life? It could be even what leader have played a meaningful role in your life. Maybe made you smarter, uh, greener, uh, taught you something new, made you healthier. When I asked myself that question, there wasn't actually a lot of uh, uh, companies on that list. There was a few. There was a few leaders on that list, but for me, that's a very, very pivotal question to ask, especially during this time. As I said, when there's so much competition about companies claiming to be uh, greener and fairer and more sustainable, because what is the actual delivery point of those claims? Because it almost seems like, you know, and sorry for the analogy that. 
you know, if, if you go into a bar and you kick open the door and you scream, hey, all oh, listen up, I'm the world's best lover. At some point, somebody in that bar is going to find out that you're not. And the same thing is true when we talk about those claims that, oh, I care so much about the environment and the sea turtles and all that stuff, or I dig sustainability so much, or whatever it might be. So, um, so for me, uh, the important thing is really to think about how can you deliver to your customers? And it's not about that navel gazing, why do you exist as a business? And I know a lot of you out there, small business owners that, obviously had a burning pur burning purpose, a burning passion for what you created. But quite frankly, if you look around, a lot of people kind of pitch the same thing. The founder story that's often based around love or hate, something that you hated so much so you had to change it or loved so much so you just wanted to personally go into, for example, a coffee business. But what's the value for your customers just because you have that burning passion and when everybody is claiming to have that burning passion, how do you make that relevant to your customers? So one uh, thing I did with the new book was I talked to a lot of business leaders and I really tried to understand that pivotal question, you know, how can we truly make a difference in people's lives? And the one key question that came up, and this is a really helpful question you can ask yourself is, who can you help people become? How can your business push people towards things that matters in their lives? So. For example, if I'm a vegan, how can you help me live a more vegan lifestyle? Or if I want to live a greener lifestyle, how can I do that? If I want to live a healthier lifestyle? So ask yourself that one question, who can you help people become? And secondly, another thing, as I said, you know, today people are becoming way more demanding than we used to. And, and it does make sense in a way. If you think about it, especially young people these days, grew up in a completely different business environment where they can pretty much get everything by the click of one simple button. So one thing you can, with benefit, ask yourself is how can you give people a bigger say in your business? You know, don't shy away from asking people in surveys. Don't shy away from... Um, from even asking things about price how can you how can you what, what are people willing to pay and I'm, I'm going to give you one example actually because i i was running a series of um of uh, webinars on uh, thomascolster.com and in the beginning we put a a price on them so we charged to think it was about uh uh was it 20 or 30 pounds for webinar discount codes and stuff like that then instead, we changed the whole pricing structure. We asked people to say, this is pretty much pay as you want. And then we detailed all the different price points from like zero saying like, if you pay a zero pounds, you know, good for you. But at some point we're gonna go bankrupt at, 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 uh, at, uh, at 20 pounds. We might, uh, we might, uh, we might turn a, a, a small profit at 30 pounds. It's, it's actually a profitable thing for us. So don't shy away from opening up your business and, and asking your customers to come with their ideas uh, to, to, to whatever they are passionate about. Because by the end of the day, I think even though that you have been passionate about creating your business, it is really about taking your customer's mindset and understanding what is it that, that, what is it that rock their boat? What is their passion? What is their dreams? What are their aspirations? And, by doing that, what I, what, I, um, what I discovered in the new book was in fact that when you take, when you, when you stand in your customer's shoes and you talk about their passions, there's a much higher chance of you motivating them to go on that journey. And obviously by the end of the day, also motivating them uh, to make a sale. So we did a survey and actually I found out that by taking this, who can you help people approach, uh, how, who can you help people become approach, uh, people were 29.4% uh, more likely uh, to feel motivated and go and buy that product. Uh, so in this uh, shouting game of who cares and I care so much about sustainability or whatever it might be, the best way, the best leadership that you can show as a small business is really to help people achieve important things in their lives. So 
we have a bit of time for questions, uh, luckily, and, and thank you so much for, um, for uh, already uh, asking quite a few questions. So I'll, I'll be uh, starting to uh, get into some of those and please uh, remember to ask those questions on Twitter or whatever platform you're at. Uh, um, so let's jump into some of them. So um, we have uh, the first one here um, from Dario from Instagram poll. So hello, Dario, thank you for asking that question. So. How can you differentiate as a small, medium-sized business in such a populated social media market? Um, Daryl, that's a great question. I mean, uh, and, and I'm totally agreeing. I mean, social media is becoming so overcrowded. Um, you know, for me, it's always about finding a compelling and authentic story. Uh, for me, uh, that's that's the most important thing. And you know, so many people try and rely on the usual uh, parameters such as price and quality or, you know, this looks fashionable or whatever. And I think today people are looking for uh, more meaning, uh, for more meaningful connections. I think uh, this is also where you can say, again, you know, what role can you play? What what role can your brand, what role can your company play in, in people's lives? Is some advice you can give them? What are they aspiring towards? And then actually sharing content that adds to people's lives rather than just, you know, interrupts them. So think about that at least. And that's a good way of, of sticking out on social. Um, so we have a second question here from Jasmine from Facebook Messenger. So thank you, Jasmine. Um, Hi, Thomas. What do you think is the most effective style for companies to express their commitment to the environment of social courses? <laughs> That was exactly the question that kind of provoked me to write the new book. And 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 to be frank, I don't think you're going to be very successful by just saying, you know, we're doing this and that. I think it's really trying to take your customer's mindset, as I said, and think about how you can push them towards some of these things. I mean, if you look at, um, there's a lot of surveys around, even from Pinterest that show that one of the things that a lot of people are, are searching for these days is, for example, how to live more sustainably, how to cut down on food waste. I think this is a, a really a cornerstone for uh, any business um, is to kind of help people uh, achieve some of those goals. So I think that's the real uh, proof point of any commitment. So um, we have also a question from Grace. Uh, thank you, Grace. Uh, good morning, I'm working on setting up my own business to have any advice on how a startup can work with a transformational purpose uh definitely i have uh <laughs> i mean for me the, the interesting thing was that um that i found that the businesses that really found that transformational role to play in people's lives uh were much more successful i mean if you think about it big Big businesses like Nike that obviously talks about just doing it for us to bridge that gap between we wanting to do a sport and we're just sitting there as a couch potato and then we're out suddenly doing it. Or if you take Apple, for example, that talks about think different and have uh, developed a, a whole creative suite of products that all helps us being much more creative. Even if you look at an iPhone today, it's amazing that just a five-year-old child can be super creative on an iPhone. So I think really, if you're setting up your business today, ask yourself that one pivotal question, uh, who can you help uh, people become? Um, so I hope that answered your question, Grace. Uh, we also have Joseph. Um, so, hey, you've been speaking on stage for years. Do you have any advice on how to become a good speaker and not getting nervous? <laughs> Honestly, Joseph, this, this was not a thing that I planned to go into public speaking. <laughs> in fact, it was something that just happened. I was living uh, in uh, Cape Town at the time, and, and my first book was, was just out. And I, I remember still to this day that... Um, <laughs> Um, my phone rang. I've been writing a few uh, uh, op-eds and stuff in newspapers and all that. And then um, somebody rang and they said, hey, we're really interested in your point of view. Can you come and talk about your new book? And I was like, nah, don't really want to. I don't really feel comfortable about it. 
And then they were like, yeah, but, but we can pay you. And then I was like, hmm, maybe I should try and do that. Um, so that was kind of how my little public speaking thing started. It wasn't anything that, that I planned to say. So, um, you know, the thing is, it's, it's just getting up there. It's just keep doing it. And it takes a while. I mean, for me, I probably only started feeling more comfortable about it after about two years or so. Um, so, uh, so for me, that was a, a big, uh, a big thing for me at least. So I'll, I'll say it's just go on stage uh, and just keep trying. And I think that's that's the real um, that's the real key to that. I question from Soul Man. So, um, what is the meaning behind it? I've done that. I've had blackouts and all that stuff. So don't be afraid. Just get up there. So we also have a question from Soul Man. So um, what is the meaning behind the title of your new book? Um, so Soul Man, thank you for asking that question. And, and obviously uh, the hero trap for me was really just saying, you know, as a company, as a leader, don't pretend to be the hero. Don't say, this is why I do these things. This is what I believe in, which is a very navel gazing approach to life rather turn your customers into the heroes in their own lives and actually this cover was made by uh, for those of you who know the uh, the illustrator uh, cuban american illustrator called adele rodriguez who's also quite famous for his not so flattering portraits of trump that's been on the cover of uh, time magazine um so um so so for me uh the hero track was really to avoid pitching yourself as saying we're doing this and that for the climate or we're doing these these uh, commitments and all uh but but really trying to understand what role can you play in people's lives what are the things that people are struggling with and as a small business it's actually a lot easier because your customer group is often much more narrow and actually thanks to social today it's also quite easy to to look at what is it that people are talking about what is it that some of the hashtags that you can explore around your business and this is a really good starting point uh for you to engage um in this field and to find out what can you do i mean uh as, as you've seen on, on online so much hero content these days is is some of the most popular stuff you know uh, people want to learn how to cook. People want to uh, learn how to uh, live more, uh, you know, to embrace mindfulness, whatever it might be. So there's so many things that you as a small business can help people with rather than just talking about your product. Because what you make is not what's going to make people tick. There's so many people who do the same thing as you. It's really who you can help people become. It's how you can push people towards some of their dreams and aspirations. That's really, really important. So and we have another question here from uh, Fatima. And, and remember, again, uh, do ask uh, questions on Twitter and whatever platform you're at. Um, so what do you think small businesses can do to help contribute to a more sustainable world with people and the planet in focus? I run a shop where locally produce products and try to encourage people to eat well and at the same time think about the environment. But sometimes it feels like what I do won't make a significant change. Uh, I mean, you are doing it already. I mean, uh, uh, just, I think today the, the, the big change is, and I, I mean, I've been in this space for about two decades now, and I've seen the massive changes happening, the, the, the push towards uh, more sustainable products, um, even the legislative push that's happening around uh, a lot, of the, a lot of the legislation that's coming into uh, into place right now. So sustainability is here uh, to stay, and it's important to obviously help people live more sustainable lives. And I think that is, in fact, the very, very difficult thing. If, if we take, for example, um, you know, our carbon footprint, how do I live more carbon friendly? That's so tough. So how can you help people do that? And obviously, if you want to lose weight, uh, it's nice. You can stand on a scale and you know how it's going. You can look down in yourself and you can see how it's going, right? With climate, it's a little bit dif different. So even there, how can you illustrate? How can you, for example, put a carbon footprint on your products 
So it enables me to live a more carbon friendly lifestyle. So I think there's so much of this stuff that uh, might seem simple, um, but it's a really great win uh, for your customers. Uh, and 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 Fatima, just keep keep doing what you're doing, and and keep thinking about uh, new and innovative ways that you can uh, engage uh, uh, your customers with, and even even a host, even a host, you can host a thing in your store uh, where you ask for customer feedback, where you ask for what are the sort of sustainable products that they want on the shelf. So be much more open to customer input. People really want to help out. I mean. I'm I'm amazed by what happens when you do that sort of outreach, even my own business. Why I sometimes I sometimes have more of a, a sort of kind of friendly kind of co-development thing with my customers. I invite them in. You can even do like a little Zoom call or whatever. I get some feedback, things that I should change in my business, and people actually want to contribute. Um, so always um, always try and think about how you can bring your customers much closer. Um, so, um, and we have uh, another question here from, um, and I hope I, hope I pronounce this right, or Siam from Instagram direct messages. So thank you. So good morning. And yes, um, good morning to you. Uh, if you could have dinner with one person, <laughs> who would it be and why? <laughs> um, uh, who would that be? Um, you know, I feel I've actually been pretty lucky um, traveling around the world and meeting a lot of interesting people. I think that's actually the one thing that um, that inspires me and makes me do what I do today. It is actually the engagement, even the questions from all the you people. That's the thing that keeps me on track. That's the thing that inspires me. Um, oh, if I had to pick one person right now, um, uh, you know, this is an unfair one because he's not living anymore. But you know, I actually would have loved to um, to catch up with uh, Mandela and uh, probably, especially today, because we live in such a divided time uh, where everything seems to be black and white in politics and in society in general. Um, and I think he was uh, he was a, an inspiring uh, bridge builder. Um, so yeah. Probably it would be uh, <laughs> probably it would be Mandela. I I could probably meet up with him in heaven sometime, uh, you know, if it exists anyway. So um, and I have another question coming in here, and keep asking questions. It can be about everything in this wonderful marketing space. It can be about your business ideas. It can be about how you can engage your customers. It can even be about how you can go about asking that pivotal question: Who can you help people? become. Um, so uh, I have a question and, and this is always good. It's always good to have a, a, some, some, um, some uh, concrete examples. So then Danielle from uh, Twitter DM. So um, thanks for asking that question. Do you have any examples of brands that are doing marketing well today to look for inspiration? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of food brands that I'm 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 gonna mention. I mean, obviously, if we don't look at the recent kind of episodes in terms of that whole investment thing that happened with Oatly, uh, you know, the oat milk brand, I actually think they were they were doing uh, very very well. I think they had a very kind of down to earth, very human approach. They were very approachable. Um, uh, they were uh, really answering that who can you help people become question because they were pushing us to a more uh, plant-based uh, diet. So I think they got a lot of things right. Unfortunately, obviously, they, they did a little key mistake uh, by bringing on board uh, the wrong investor. But, but Oatly is a really great example of a brand that is um, doing, doing well. Um, uh, some other brands, and, and I won't have too much time to kind of dive into the examples, but there's a Canadian sports retailer that's called Respect Your Universe that's, that's uh, really interesting about inclusive sports. Um, there's um, the founders, Tom and Max, from, a, um, um, from a, a running glass company called District Vision that's uh, worth uh, looking into. They talk about mindful uh, running. So those, those are a couple of, of, of cases you can uh, look into. 
And we have a question from um, Alinas from Twitter as well. So uh, what advice have you been given in your career or learned that you wish you knew earlier on? <laughs> uh, good question. I mean, for me, and, and this actually ties back to my first book, because at the time I was working at, um, at uh, uh, an ad agency and, and, you know, I got provoked to write the first book because of, uh, you know, the ongoing climate crisis, the climate summit where our elected, you know, the, the, the cops, where our elected government leaders didn't really help uh, come up with any uh, viable solutions. So I started writing, writing on this book. And I remember uh, I asked a, a very respected colleague about what he thought about it. And, and he challenged me if I had the right qualifications to doing it. And my response to him was, you know, because he said, so uh, what makes you the most capable person uh, to do it? And I said, because I'm doing it. I think that might be the key advice that I've always followed in my career is just to keep doing it. I mean, embrace the possibilities. Don't, don't aim for the second best. Aim for your dreams. Aim for what it is that you want to achieve. And then just go, go knock on that door. Uh, because I came from pretty much no writing experience. I've been a copywriter and ad agency, of course, but I had never written a book to knocking on the door uh, of uh, James and Hudson. So I think that's that's a key advice that uh, that um, that I think I would uh, pass on. Um, so um, so uh, we have uh, another question from Sandra. How do we know that brands are truly being sustainable after saying they are? Do they use this as a market employee, do you think? Sounds a great question. And yes, what, what, you know, what, how, how, how would we know? I mean, and that's the key thing behind me wanting to write a new book because everybody can claim that doing all sorts of great things for the environment. But I think the real leadership is if you can feel that change on your own body. If they have helped you become greener, or if they have helped you become healthier, that's the ultimate proof point, uh, from my point of view, anyways. So uh, we unfortunately don't have uh, any more uh, time for uh, questions, but uh, thank you so much for taking part uh, in uh, and, and, and sending in your questions. And I just want to uh, comment a little bit on the, on the poll. So thank you for answering uh, some of those questions in the poll or answering the one question in the poll. Do you feel that your business is making a positive change in people's lives? So that was the poll question. 33% of all of you said yes, and 67% of you said no, um, which is great. Uh, so for the 67% of you who said no, I think you just got to get started because people are not buying what you make or why you make it because everybody's claiming to have a higher purpose today. People are buying who you can help them become. So ask yourself that one question, who can you help people become? And maybe even go grab a copy of The Hero Trap. That might help you, just saying. Um, and uh, for those of you who said yes, uh, I will challenge you a little bit and, and think about how you can uh, turn uh, people into a much more uh, active participant across the marketing mix. So invite them much closer into uh, what products you're making, what products should be on the shelf, pricing, maybe even ask them about campaigns. People really want to uh, play a uh, part. So um, be much more open and um, and be much more engaging. I'd say that to the ones uh, who said yes uh, with the 33%. And, and by the way, uh, we do uh, actually run quite a few uh, webinars and stuff on the methodology. So you're always uh, welcome uh, to uh, obviously tune into uh, thomascolster.com where you can see much more about the framework and get uh, much more advice. But anyways, uh, if you have uh, more questions, uh, then please get in contact with the QuickBooks support team. And if you want to get in contact with me, you can follow me on social media, um, at Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever. You're welcome to connect with me or send me an email at thomas at Uh, and we have another 
interesting expert on tomorrow at Ask the Expert. It's uh, Judith Duckdale, who heads up a digital solutions team at MHH More and Smalley. And Judith is an expert of how businesses can improve their in-house financial reporting um, function and advise her clients on how to grow uh, profitably. So that should be a lot of great insights there for you. So uh, if you need more advice, uh, join the official uh, Intuit QuickBooks as a B community group on Facebook where you have experts standing online 24 seven. I really enjoyed answering your questions and thank you so much. And I wish you all an amazing day. And remember, don't pitch yourself as the hero, but help your customers become heroes in their own lives. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure um, uh, meeting you all this morning.